country. That was a disaster. They lost plenty of money on that one. That now look, he's, that's that's I propaganda. That company. It. There's a yeah, whole different story to that. <laughs> but we're that's Republican propaganda, son. You're in thirty seconds away from this debate. Just think about this: as divided as the country is right now, we're gonna have, by some estimates, a hundred million. You guys ready? Tuning in. To watch this debate, so this is in some ways Frank way, versus Hillary country, versus Donald. There we and go, here folks. We go with Lester Holt, the moderator. Good evening from Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. I'm Lester Holt, anchor of NBC Nightly News. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. The participants tonight are Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. This debate is sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates, a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization. The commission drafted tonight's format, and the rules have been agreed to by the campaigns. The 90-minute debate is divided into six segments, each 50 minutes long. Uh -huh. We'll explore three topic okay, areas tonight, achieving prosperity, <coughs> America's direction, and securing America. At the start of each segment, I will ask the same lead-off question to both candidates, and they will each have up to two minutes to respond. From that point until the end of the segment, we'll have an open discussion. Oh, yes, we will. The questions are mine and have not been shared with the commission or the campaigns. Uh -huh. The audience here That's in the room has agreed to remain silent so that we can focus on what the candidates are saying. I will invite you to applaud, however, at this no, moment, great. I'm as weed we welcome to get ready. the candidates. You know, this is be Democratic fun. nominee for President of the United States, there Hillary we go. Clinton, and Republican nominee for President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. All right. And I'm Frank Barris, and I'm going to debate them both. And this is going to be fun, folks. You guys ready for this? Oh, she's being nice. How are you, Donald? Wow. This is the start. This, just this. I mean, I'm adding a little something to it, too, folks. <coughs> you guys ready? Don't expect us to cover all the issues of this campaign tonight, but I remind everyone there are two more presidential debates scheduled. We are going to focus on many of the issues that voters tell us are most important, and we're going to press for specifics. Mm -hmm. I am honored to have this role, but this evening belongs to the candidates and the American people. Candidates, we look forward to hearing you articulate your policies and your positions, as well as your visions and your values. So, let's begin. Let's begin. We're calling this opening segment Achieving Prosperity, and central to that is jobs. There are two economic realities in America today. There's been a record six straight years of job growth, and new census numbers show incomes have increased at a record rate after years of stagnation. However, income inequality remains significant, and nearly half of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Beginning with you, Secretary uh, Clinton, why are you a better choice than your opponent to create the kinds of jobs that will put more money into the pockets of American workers? Well, thank you, Lester, and thanks to Hofstra for hosting us. The central question in this election is really what kind of country we want to be and what kind of future yeah, we'll build great. together. Today is my granddaughter's second birthday, oh, so I think about name. this a lot. <laughs> First, we have to build an economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. Yeah, that the ones that you've been with. That means we need new jobs, good jobs, with rising incomes. I want ones us that to haven't been shipped out because of NAFTA? I want us to invest in your future. That yeah. means jobs in infrastructure, in advanced manufacturing, in innovation and technology, clean renewable energy, and small business then why'd you support fracking jobs will come from small business oh, we clean also energy. have to this, make the, the fracking woman fairer. want to spread that it around the world raising the national minimum wage which you were against also guarantee finally equal pay for women's work i also want to see more companies do profit sharing if you help create the profits you should be able to share in them not just the executives at the top and i want us to do more to support people who are struggling to balance family and work. I've heard from so many of you about the difficult choices you face and the stresses that you're under. Yeah. So let's have paid family it's leave, world. earn sick days. Let's be sure we have affordable childcare and debt-free college. Yeah. How are we gonna do it? We're gonna do it Elect by having Bernie the Sanders. wealthy pay their oh, fair right. share and close the corporate loopholes. Finally, we tonight are on the stage together, Donald Trump and I. Uh -huh. Uh, Donald, 
It's good to be with you. Yeah, liar. <laughs> First lie. Lie We're number one. We're going to have a debate <laughs> where we kind of are say that one. talking about the important issues facing our country. You have to judge us. Who can oh. shoulder the immense, awesome responsibilities of the presidency? Who Frank Barris. This guy right here. Put into action the plans that will make your life better. I hope well, you that support I will the TPP, which will destroy our democracy. Doesn't make anyone's life better. Thank you, Mr. Trump. The same question oh, to you. about putting money, more money, into the pockets of American workers. You have up to two he minutes. Support. Thank you, Lester. Oh. Uh, our jobs are fleeing the country. Yes. They're going to Mexico. They're going to many other countries. You look at what China is doing to our country in terms of making our product. They're devaluing their currency, and there's nobody in our government to fight them. And we have a very good fight, and we have a winning fight, because they're using our country as a piggy bank to rebuild China. And many other countries are doing the same thing. So we're losing our good jobs, so many of them. Well, we've lost when them. you look at what's happening in we've Mexico, lost the a friend of mine who builds plants said it's the eighth wonder of the world. They're building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world, some of the most sophisticated, some of the best plants. With the United States, as huge, you said, huge not plants. so much. So Ford is leaving. You see that, their small car division leaving. Thousands of jobs leaving Michigan, leaving Ohio. They're all leaving, and we can't allow it to happen anymore. As far as child care is concerned and so many other things, I think Hillary and I agree on that. Uh, we probably disagree a little bit as to uh, numbers and amounts and what we're going to do, but perhaps we'll be talking about that later. But we have to stop our start jobs up from him. being stolen from us. We have to stop <laughs> our employees from leaving the United States and with it, firing all of their people. All you have to do is take a look at carrier air condition in uh, Indianapolis. They left fired 1,400 people. They're going to Mexico. So many hundreds and hundreds of because companies of are doing this. We cannot let it happen. Under my plan, I'll be reducing taxes tremendously from 35% to 15% for companies, small and big businesses. That's going to be a job creator like we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. Companies will come, they will build, they will expand, new companies will start, and I look very, very much forward to doing it. What about all the money the companies put offshore? And we have and to close stop those loopholes? these countries from stealing our companies and our jobs. Secretary Clinton, would you like He's to talking about they all Well, I think that trade is an important issue. It of is. course, we are 5% of the world's population. We have to trade with the other 95%. And we need to have smart, fair trade deals. We also, though, need to have a tax system that rewards work and not just financial transactions. Yeah, exactly. And the kind of plan that Donald has put forth would be trickle-down economics all yep. over again. His, fact, his plans for the billionaires, the folks, whether you version, believe his populist bullshit for, or not. Uh, the top percent of the people in this country that we've ever had. I call it trumped up trickle-down because that's exactly what Ooh, it would be. But she thought that of that one. That is not how we grow trumped up the economy. Down. We just have a different Hashtag trumped up trickle down. what's best for growing the economy. How we make investments that will actually produce uh, jobs don't support and the TPP? rising incomes. Cancel NASA? I think we come at it from somewhat different perspectives. Yeah, uh, I understand that. You know, Donald uh, was very fortunate in his life, and that's all to his benefit. Uh, he started his business with $14 million borrowed from his father, and he really believes Let's make it personal, that cause that's not the more you help later. wealthy people, the better off we'll be, and that everything will work out from there. I don't buy that. You do buy that. I have a different experience. My father was a small businessman. He worked really hard. He printed drapery fabrics on long tables where he pulled out those fabrics and he went down with a silk screen and dumped the paint in and took the squeegee and kept going. Wow. And so what I believe is the more we can do for the middle class, the more we can invest in the you, TPP your will finish destroying the middle skills, class. Your future, NAFTA started the it. The better we will be off and the better we'll grow. That's the kind of economy Things I want to see. Things that come out of this woman's mouth. Let me follow up with Mr. Trump if I can. You've talked about creating 25 the facts million of jobs. Her positions. You promised to bring, bring back millions of, uh, of jobs for Americans. How are we going to bring back the industries that have left this country for cheaper labor overseas? How specifically are you going to tell American manufacturers that you have to come back? 
Well, for one thing, uh, and before we start on that, my father uh, gave oh, me geez, a small loan in 1975, and I small built it into a company that's worth many, many billions of dollars with some of the greatest assets in the world. And I say You've that increased that wealth kind of less than if it had been put in just a mutual fund. We don't know what we're doing when it comes to devaluations and all of these countries all over the world, especially China. They're the, the, best, the best ever at it. What they're doing to us is a very, very... Oh, no. thing. So we have to do that. We have to renegotiate our trade deals. And Lester, they're taking our jobs, they're giving incentives, they're doing things that, frankly, we don't do. Uh, let me give you the example of Mexico. They have a VAT tax. We're in a different system. When we sell into Mexico, there's a tax. When they sell in automatic, 16% approximately. When they sell into us, there's no tax. It's a defect agreement. It's been defective for a long time, many years, but the politicians haven't done anything about it. Now, in all fairness to uh, Secretary Clinton, I guess, is that okay? Good. I want you to be very happy. Wow. It's very important to me. But in all fairness to Secretary Clinton, <laughs> when she started talking about this, it was what do really I call very you? recently. She's been doing this for 30 years. And why hasn't she made the agreements better? After agreement, because she supports the oligarchy. Because, of because the she supports the oligarchy. Many other reasons, but just because of the fact. Let me interrupt this a moment. Secretary Clinton and others, politicians, should have been doing this for years. Not right you now. You should listen to Ross Perot back in 92. They should have been doing this for years. What's happened to our jobs and our sure. country and our economy generally is, look, we owe $20 trillion dollars. We cannot do because it. Because of George longer. Bush's war and President tax cut. How do you bring back, specifically Mostly. bring back jobs? American manufacturers, that? how do you make them bring the jobs back? Well, the first thing you do is don't let the jobs leave. The companies are leaving. I could name, I mean, there are thousands of them. They're leaving, and they're leaving in bigger numbers than ever. And what you do is you say, fine, you want to go to Mexico or some other country, good luck. We wish you a lot of luck. But if you think you're going to make your air conditioners or your cars or your cookies or whatever you make and bring them into our country without a tax, you're wrong. And what once you say you're going to have Come on. to tax them coming in, and our politicians never do this because they have special interests and the special interests want those companies to leave because in many cases they own the companies. So... What I'm saying is we can stop them from leaving. We have to stop them from leaving. And that's a big, big factor. Let me let Secretary Clinton again. Well, let's stop for a second and remember where we were eight years ago. We had the worst financial crisis, the Great Recession, the worst since the 1930s. That was set up by Bill that Clinton getting rid of Glass-Steagall. Because of tax policies that slashed taxes on the wealthy, failed to invest in the middle class, took their eyes off of Wall Street and created a perfect storm. Off Wall Street. In fact, Obama Donald was prosecuted one of the no who one for the housing crisis. He said you won't back either. in 2006, gee, I, I hope it does collapse because then I can go in and buy some and make some money. Well, it did collapse. That's called nine, business, but nine million <laughs> called business, lady. Nine million people lost their Listen. jobs. Five million people lost their homes and thirteen trillion dollars in family wealth was wiped out. Because now, your husband got rid of the banking regulations which that stopped that shit from happening for 80 years. Else. So we're now on the precipice of having a potentially much better economy, but the last thing we need to do is to go back to the policies that failed us in the first place. Independent That's experts true. have looked at what I've proposed and looked at what Donald's proposed, and basically they've said <coughs> this, that if his tax plan which would blow up the debt by over $5 trillion and would, in some instances, this tax disadvantage plan is crazy. middle class families for the compared to the wealthy, were to go way. into effect, we would lose 3.5 million jobs and maybe have another recession. They've looked at my plans and they've said, okay, if we can do this, and I intend to get it done, we will have 10 million more new jobs. Because we will be making investments where we can grow the economy. Take clean energy. Some country is going to be the clean energy superpower of the 21st century. Be if it was us. Donald thinks that climate change is 
a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. I think it's real. Uh, and I you spread it around the world. I do not say that. And I think I it's important he does that, say that we Shut up, grip this and deal with it, both at home and abroad. And here's what we can do. We can deploy a half a billion more solar panels. We can have enough clean energy to power every home. We can build a new modern electric grid. That's a lot of jobs. That's a lot of new economic activity. Right. So I've tried to be very specific. Too bad we had to do that fracking thing first and, and destroy do. the and whole I planet. Real quick. That and we're now going we're going to do get this. The economy really moving again, building on the progress we've made over the last eight years, but never going back to what got us in trouble in the first place. Mr. Trump, she talks about solar panels. Uh, we invested in a solar company in our country. That was a disaster. They lost plenty of money on that one. That now look, he's, that's that's I propaganda. That company. Company, there's a whole different story to that. <laughs> That's Republican propaganda, son. Our energy policies are a disaster. Because our country is like losing it. so much in terms of energy, in terms of paying off our debt. You can't do what you're looking to do with 20 trillion in debt. The Obama administration, but he's going to make the debt worse. The time they've come in is over 230 years worth of debt, and he's topped it. He's doubled it. In a course of almost because of the eight war years, and, and years the tax cut that were put in place. So I will tell you this: uh, we have to do a much better job at keeping our jobs, and we have to do a much better job at giving companies incentive to build new companies or to expand because they're not doing it. And all you have to do is look at Michigan and look at Ohio and look at all of these places where so many of their of their jobs and their companies are just leaving. They're gone. And Hillary, I just ask you this. It's happened in a You've long time. Since NAFTA, this, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been around NAFTA years. time. Why are you the just middle class just got sucked dry. Right now. For 30 years you've been doing it, and now you're just starting to think of solutions. <laughs> well, actually, I will bring, excuse me, I will bring back jobs. Ooh. You can't bring back jobs. Well, actually, um, I have thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, for 30 and years. I have, uh, well, not quite that long. Uh, I think my husband did a pretty good job in the 1990s. I think a lot about what yeah, he did in the beginning. Can make it then he sold again. out the economy. New jobs, a balanced budget, which is the single and worst trade deal comes, ever approved in this country. Incomes went up for everybody. Manufacturing jobs went up also in the 1990s. If we're actually going to look at the facts, yeah, and have to when set up what Senate, happened later. I had a number of trade deals that came before me, and I held them all to the same test. Will they create jobs in America? Will they raise incomes in America? And are they good for our national security? Some of them I voted for. The biggest one, a multinational one known as CAFTA, I voted against. And because I hold the same standards as I look at all of these trade deals. But let's not assume the TPP that will trade create courts that will destroy our democracy and she's for it. I think it is a part of it, and I've said what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a special prosecutor. We're going to enforce the trade deals we have, and we're going to hold people accountable. When I was Secretary of State, we actually increased American exports globally 30%. We increased them to China 50%. So I know how to that really the fracking. to get new jobs and to get exports that help to create more new jobs. Right. Well, you haven't done it in 30 years or 26 years. Well, I, I've wanted. been a senator, you Donald, haven't done it. and you haven't I done have it. been a and secretary of state, and I have your done Your husband signed NAFTA, which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing your industry. That is your you go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere. Where, but yep. certainly ever signed True. in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, no, she heard what that debate. Bad. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. That, that is just No, the TPP is worse than NAFTA. I uh, was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in... You called it the uh, gold standard. About, well, I you called I, it the gold standard of trade deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it, and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. The facts are, <laughs> yeah. I did say, I hoped it would be a good deal, but when it was negotiated, not which either. I was not responsible for, I concluded it wasn't. I wrote about that. So is it President in Obama's fault? Is it President Obama's fault? Even announced. Look, there Secretary, are different... is it... 
President Obama's Ooh. fault? There are because he's pushing. There are different views about what's good for our country, our economy, and our leadership in the world. And I think it's important to look at what we need to do to get the economy going again. That's why I said new jobs with rising incomes, investments, not in more tax cuts that would add five trillion dollars to the debt. But you have but no in plan. Educate. Oh, I do. Secretary, in fact, you I have, have no plan. Yes, yeah, she's going to support the TPP. It. It's called Stronger Together. You can pick it up That's tomorrow. No matter what she says, she clearly supports the or TPP. Or in an airport near you. Uh, but oh, now she's it's selling because a book. I see this. We need to have strong growth. Fair growth, sustained The TPP growth. will destroy our democracy. It creates courts that will balance invalidate our laws. responsibilities at home and the responsibilities at business. So we have a very robust set of plans. And people who have looked robust. at both of our plans have concluded that mine would create 10 million jobs and yours would lose us three and a half million jobs and explode the You are the going debt, to approve one of the biggest tax cuts in history. You are going to approve one of the biggest tax increases in history. Oh, up there. You are going to drive business out. Your regulations are a disaster and you're going to increase regulations all over the place. And by the way, my tax cut is the biggest since Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. You know, I shouldn't it be proud of it. It's for the billionaires. No matter what you say, it's for the billionaires. Regulations. You are going to regulate these businesses out of existence. When I go around... He wants to get rid of the estate you, tax. The most over. efficient tax and you can think around, of. Despite the tax cut, the thing, the things that business and people like the most is the fact that I'm cutting regulation. You have regulations on top biz, of regulations. He's going to do what big business wants. That's what he means by cutting and regulation. All companies are going out of business, and you want to increase the regulations and make them even worse. I'm going to cut regulations, but I'm going to cut taxes, big league, and you're going to raise big taxes, big league. End of story. Let me get you to pause right there because we're going to yes. move into the, <laughs> that, move into the next segment. Yeah, that, that, can't, that can't be left Please to stand. Take 30 you know, seconds I, I kind of assumed that there would be a lot of these charges and claims. And so Facts. we have taken uh, the homepage of my website, HillaryClinton.com, and we've turned it into a fact checker. So if you want to see in real time uh, what the facts are, please go and take a look. Because and take a look at mine also. And not see. add a penny to the debt. And your plans would add five trillion dollars to the debt. What I have proposed would cut regulations and streamline them for small businesses. What I have proposed would be paid for by raising taxes on the wealthy because they have made all the gains in the economy. And I think it's time that the wealthy and corporations paid their fair share to support this. Well, country. you just opened the next segment. Well, look, can I just finish? I think I, I, think I, I, think I should. You, I'm going to give you go to her website right here with and you take a look at her segment. website. Oh She's going to raise taxes $1.3 trillion. Mr. Trump, I'm and look at her website. You know what? It's no different than this. She's telling us how to fight ISIS. Just go to her website. She tells you how to fight ISIS on her website. I don't think General Douglas MacArthur would like that right, too the much. Next, the, next, the next segment, we're continuing well, the subject. Well, at least I have a plan to fight ISIS. Process. No, no. You're telling the enemy she everything you want to do. created ISIS. No, we're not. See, you're no, telling, we're telling the enemy everything we're you want to do. We're no wonder you've been fighting. No wonder she got rid of Gaddafi in Libya. Killed the life. sitting head of state in Libya. Go to the Please, the fact checkers, get Folks, to work. You are unpacking a lot here, and we're still in the issue of uh, achieving prosperity. And I want to talk about uh, taxes. Uh, the fundamental good. difference like, between good. the two of you concerns the wealthy. Secretary Clinton, you're calling for a tax increase in the wealthiest Americans. I'd like you to further defend that. And Mr. Trump, you're calling for tax cuts for the wealthy. I'd like you to defend that. And this next two-minute answer goes to you, Mr. Trump. Well, I'm really calling for major jobs because the wealthy are going to create tremendous jobs. They're going to expand their companies. They're going to do a tremendous job. I'm getting rid of the carried interest provision. And if you really look, it's not a tax. It's really not a great thing for the wealthy. It's a great thing for the middle class. It's a great thing for companies to expand and when these people are going to put billions and billions of dollars into companies and when they're going to bring two and a half trillion dollars back from overseas where they can't bring the money back because politicians like secretary clinton the money back because the taxes are so onerous and the get bureaucratic money back. red tape so all that money so they stashed in the so cayman what islands doing is they're leaving our country and they're believe it or not leaving because taxes are too high and because some of them have lots of money outside of our country and instead of bringing it back and putting the money to work because they can't work out a deal to 
and everybody agrees it should be brought back. Instead of that, they're leaving our country to get their money because they can't bring their money back into our country because of bureaucratic red tape, because they can't get together. Because we have a pre we have a president that can't sit them around a table and get them to approve something. And here's the thing. Republicans and Democrats agree that this should be done. Two and a half trillion. I happen to think it's double that. It's probably five trillion dollars that we can't bring into our country, Lester. And with a little leadership, you'd get it in here very quickly. And it could be put to use on the inner cities and lots of other things. And it would be beautiful. But we have no I don't see him leadership. going after that. And honestly, that starts with Secretary Clinton. Everybody thinks true. I just don't see right, him you doing it. Two minutes it. of the same question to defend up the other tax increases on the wealthiest American, Secretary Clinton. I, I have a feeling that by the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Jo you know, just 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 join uh, join the debate by uh, saying more crazy things. Now. Let me say, and there's nothing crazy is about not letting our companies case. bring their money it, back into oh this. Oh my This is uh, Secretary Clinton's two minutes, yes. please. Yeah, well, let's start the clock again, Lester. Um, we've looked at your tax proposals. I don't see changes in the corporate tax rates or the kinds of proposals you're referring to that would cause the repatriation, bringing back of money that's stranded overseas. I happen to then you support didn't read that. I happen to I happen to support that in a way that will actually work to our benefit. But when I look at what you have proposed, you have what is called now the Trump loophole because it would so advantage you and the business you do. You've proposed a, an name? approach First that ever. has a that four this is, this billion is dollar tax minutes. benefit this for your Clinton's family. And when you look at what much, you are proposing, it is, sure as I said, He's trumped up the trickle down. Guy. Trickle it's down did not work. Trickle it got us into work. the mess we were in in 2009. <coughs> Slashing taxes on the wealthy hasn't worked. And a lot of really smart, wealthy people know that. And they are saying, hey, we need to do more to make the contributions we should be making to rebuild the middle class. I don't think top-down works in America. I think building the middle class, investing in the middle class, making college debt-free so more young people can get their education, helping people refinance their tax, their, their debt from college at a lower rate. Those are the kinds of things that will really boost the economy. About canceling their debt, like we canceled the big company's debt. growth is what we need in America, not the more advantages trillions. for people at the very top. Mr. Trump, we're typical talking. politician, all talk, no action, sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the statement. worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. Yes, we are. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest yeah. rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. Yep. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have of course it's going to crash again. That's, that's what they do. Political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed. The Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, you're going to see some very bad things happen because the Fed is not doing their job. The Fed is and being more the Fed, or at the very least, audit the, the Fed. Clinton. Can we audit Mr. the Trump, Fed, we're please? We're talking about the burden that Americans have to pay, yet you have not released your tax returns. Oh, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? I don't mind releasing. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released, and as soon as the audit's finished. But you will learn more about Donald Trump by going down to the federal elections, where I filed a 104-page essentially financial statement of sorts, the forms that they <laughs> made, I made up a bunch of it stuff. It shows income. In fact, the I'll income, look I just looked today, the income is filed at $694 million for this past year. $694 million. 
you would have told me I was going to make that 15 or 20 years ago, I would have been very surprised. But that's the kind of thinking that our country needs. When we have a country that's doing so badly, that's being ripped off by every single country in the world, it's the kind of thinking that our country needs because everybody... Lester, we have a trade deficit with all of the countries that we do business with of almost $800 billion a year. You know what that is? That means who's negotiating these trade deals? We have people that are political hacks negotiating our trade deals. The IRS has Excuse an audit me. of your taxes. Uh, it's, you're perfectly free to release uh, your taxes during an audit. So the question, does the public's right to know outweigh your personal... Well, I told you, I will release them as soon as the audit. Look, I've been under audit almost yeah, for 15 years. I know a lot of wealthy people that have never been audited. I said, do you get audited? I get audited Changing almost the every Let's year. see your taxes, son. And in a way, I should be complaining. Your taxes. I'm not even complaining. We want to see you. how dirty your deals are, son. Part of one of the president. You can see my taxes don't. if you like. I will say this. Guy. What do you think I got? We have a situation in this country that has to be taken care of. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes. You better. When she releases her 33,000 emails oh, that have been snap. deleted. As soon as she releases <coughs> them, I would will like to release, see both. I will release <coughs> my tax returns, and that's against my lawyers. They say don't do it. I will tell you this. Do it. No, in fact, Ooh, watch it. Throw down the gauntlet, son. Reading the papers. Almost every lawyer says, you don't release your returns until the audit's complete. When the audit's complete, I'll do it. But I would go against them if she releases her So it's negotiable? It is negotiable. It's not negotiable. No, let her release the email. Why did she delete 33,000? Well, I'll let her ask that, but let me just uh, admonish the audience one more time. There was an agreement. We did ask you to be silent, so it would be Never helpful happened. for us. Stop. Secretary let it happen, son. Well, I think you've just seen another example of bait and switch here. No, will you um, release them? For 40 years, everyone Talk running for president way. has released their tax returns. You can go and see nearly, I think, 39, 40 years of our tax returns, but everyone has done it. We know the IRS has made clear there is no prohibition on releasing it when you're it. under audit. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Hmm. Second... Maybe he's not as charitable as he claims well, to be. That's for sure. Third, we don't know all of his business dealings, but we have You're been told both through investigative reporting dealings. that he owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that, that makes means me zero smart, for troops, Be proud of zero defrauding your for country, vets, son. zero for schools or health. And I think probably he's not uh, all that enthusiastic about having the rest of our country see uh, what the real reasons are, because it must be something really important, even terrible, that he's trying to hide. And the financial disclosure statement, they don't give you the tax rate. They don't give you all the details that tax returns would. And it just seems to me that this is something that the American people deserve to see. And I have no reason to believe that uh, he's ever going to release his tax returns because there's something he's hiding. And we'll guess. We'll keep guessing at what it might be that he's hiding. Uh, but I think the question is, were he ever to get near the White House, what would be those conflicts? Who does he owe money? Well, he owes you the answers to that, and he should provide them. And you're them. beholden also, to Saudi Arabia, also lady. the issue of your email, so you want to respond to that? I do. You know, Ooh, yeah, I made a mistake oh. using a private email. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Uh, but... I'm not going to make any excuses. Talking about the content it was a mistake, of it. And I take responsibility for that. Mr. Trump? That's all she's going to say? That was more than a mistake. That was done purposely. Okay, that was not a mistake. That was done purposely. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted. When you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. 
And believe me, this country thinks it's disgrace. It really thinks it's disgraceful also. As far as my tax returns, you don't learn that much from tax returns, that I can tell you. You learn a lot from financial disclosure. Uh, you should have set it up and back on her. And and take a look at that. The other thing, I'm extremely under leveraged. Uh, See, he's the arguing, that but said switch back which, to say, way, a lot of you release the emails, I'll release the taxes. Boy, that's really not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money relative to Roy yeah, Hatton. Yeah, the buildings that were in question, they said in the same report, which was actually it wasn't even a bad story, to be honest with you, but the buildings are worth $3.9 the Donald protesteth a bit much. And the 650 is isn't even on that, but it's not 650 It's much less than that. But go. I could give you a list Just of banks. Just release the tax that returns then, son. I could give you a list of banks. These are or throw it back on her and let's say, yeah, I'll release when you release. Banks. I could do that very quickly. Love I'm to see those 33,000 deleted company. emails. I have a tremendous income. And the reason I say that is not in a braggadocious way. It's because it's about time that this country had somebody running it that has an idea about money. But we have $20 trillion in debt and our country's a mess. You know, it's one thing to have $20 trillion in debt and our roads are good and our bridges are good and everything's in great shape. Our airports, our airports are like from a third world country. You land at LaGuardia, you land at Kennedy, you land at LAX, you land at Newark. And you come in from Dubai and Qatar, and you see these incredible, you come in from China, you see these incredible airports, and you land, we become a third world country. So, the worst of all things has happened. We owe $20 trillion, and we're a mess. We haven't even started. And we've spent $6 trillion in the Middle East, according to the report that I just saw. Whether it's six or five, but it looks like it's six. Six trillion dollars. In the Middle East, we could have rebuilt our country twice. And it's really a shame. And it's politicians like Secretary Clinton that have caused this problem. Our country has tremendous problems. We're a debtor nation. We're a serious debtor nation. And we have a country that needs new roads, new tunnels, new bridges, new airports, new schools, new hospitals. We've been and looted. we don't have the money because it's been squandered on so many of your squandered ideas. Slash and looted. Because, because you haven't paid any federal income tax for a lot of years. Oh, snap. And nice the comeback. other thing I think is important it would to be point squandered out too, is believe me. If, you're, if your main claim to be president of the United States is your business, then I think we should talk about that. You know, your campaign manager said that you built a lot of businesses on the backs of little guys. And indeed, I have met a lot of the people who were stiffed by you and your businesses, Donald. I've met yeah, dishwashers, ball. painters, ball, architects, glass installers, marble installers, drapery installers, like my dad was, who you refused to pay when they finished the work that you asked them to do. We have an architect in the audience who designed one of your clubhouses at one of your golf courses. It's a beautiful facility. It immediately was put to use and you wouldn't pay what the man needed to be paid what he was charging you. Maybe he do. didn't do a good job and I was well, unsatisfied with do, his work, do thousands, which our country do the, should do, do too. The thousands of people that you have stiffed over the course of your business oh, not deserve some ball. kind of apology from someone who has taken their labor, taken the goods that they produced, and then refused to pay them. I can only say that I'm certainly relieved that my late father never did business with you. Uh, he provided a good middle class life for us, but he trying the to, people like, he worked drop, for, I'm human. he I'm expected human. Really human. the bargain to be kept on family. both sides. And when we talk about your business, boy, really. you've taken business bankruptcy six times. There are a lot of great business people that have never taken bankruptcy once. You call yourself the king of debt. You talk about leverage. You even business. at one time suggested back that to the real you would try to country. negotiate down the Wrong. national debt of the United States. Well, sometimes there's not a direct transfer of skills from business to government. But sometimes what happened in business would be really bad for government. So and Trump. we need so, yeah, to I think be very clear think so. about that. Look, it's all words. It's all sound bites. I built an unbelievable company. Some of the greatest assets anywhere in the world, real estate assets anywhere in the world, beyond the United States, in Europe, lots of different places. It's an unbelievable company. Talk about how great company. he thinks he is, really. But on occasion, 
four times, in 90 minutes is we important used things to talk about. Laws that are there. War. That should we be at war? Secretary Clinton We're get talks to that. about people that drug wars. Didn't get we have paid. that. First of all, they did get paid a lot, but taking advantage of the laws of the nation. Now, if you want to change the laws, you've been there a long time. Oh, I use the, the laws, laws to screw people. But I take advantage right here. of the laws of the nation because I'm running a company. My obligation right now is to do well for <coughs> myself, my family, my employees, for my companies, and that's what I do. But what she doesn't say is the tens of thousands of people that are unbelievably happy and that love me. I'll give you an example. <laughs> We're just opening up love it. on Pennsylvania Avenue, right next to the White House. So if I don't get there one way, I'm going to get to Pennsylvania Avenue another. But we're opening the old post office. Under budget, ahead of schedule, saved tremendous money. I'm a year ahead of schedule. And that's what this country should be doing. We build roads and they cost two and three and four times what they're supposed to cost. We buy products for our military and they come at costs that are so far we talk about the military budget? Be because we about don't cutting it in half? It's been doubled since 9 11. We look at we're wreaking havoc across the, the world. Can we talk about that? Are we going to talk about you? Can we talk about you some more? As to what to do and how to buy. The Trump International is way under budget and way ahead of schedule. And we should be able to do that for our well, country. Well, we're well behind schedule, so I want to move <laughs> oh, to our next well segment. Uh, we move into our next segment talking about America's direction, and let's start by talking about race. The share of Americans who say race relations are bad in this country is the highest it's been in decades. Much of it amplified by shootings of African Americans by police as we've seen recently in Charlotte and Tulsa. Race has been a big issue in this campaign, and one of you is going to have to bridge a very wide and bitter gap. So how do you heal the divide? Secretary Clinton, you get two minutes on this. Well, you're right. Race remains a significant challenge in our country. Unfortunately, race still determines too much. Often determines where people live, determines what kind of education, in their public schools they can get, and yes, it determines how they're treated in the criminal justice system. We've just seen those two tragic examples in both Tulsa and She's Charlotte. She's in her ear. The speech in her ear like Bush did. At the same she time. has the, the ear. We she, have you can to tell she's reading what they're saying. restore trust between communities and the police. We have to work to make sure that our police are using the best training, the best techniques, that they're well prepared Sorry, I need the water for a to use oh, force folks. only when necessary. Everyone should be respected by the law. Tell and homeless guy everyone should shit. respect Sorry. the law. Right now that's not the case in a lot of our neighborhoods. So I have, ever since the first day of my campaign, called for criminal justice reform. I've laid out a platform that I think would begin to remedy some of the problems we have in the criminal justice system. But we also have to recognize, in addition to the challenges that we face with policing, there are so many good, brave police officers who equally want reform. So we have to bring communities together in order to begin working on that. You have to stop the drug war. Goal. That's how you stop the violence. You stop the drug war. Out of the hands of people who should not have them. The gun epidemic Bigger than is this, the Hillary. leading cause of death of young African American men. More than the next nine causes put together. So we have to do two things, as I said. We have to restore trust. We have to work with the police. We have to make sure they respect the communities and the communities respect them. And we have to tackle the plague of gun violence, which is a big contributor to a lot of the problems that we're seeing today. All right, Mr. Trump, you have two minutes. How do you heal the divide? Oh, this would be good. Well, first of all, Secretary Clinton doesn't want to use a couple of words, and that's law and order. And we need law and order. Make we don't words. have it. Words We're not going to have people. a country. And when I look at what's going on in Charlotte, a city I love, a city where I have investments, when I look at what's going on throughout various parts of our country, whether it's, I mean, I can just keep naming them all day long. We need law and order in our country. 
And I just got today uh, the, as you know, the endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police. You have to we just, stop uh, the drug just war. It's not going to uh, end until you stop from, the war on people every living their lives. Group, very, I mean, a large percentage of them in the United States. Uh, we have a situation where we have uh, our inner cities, African Americans, Hispanics, are living in hell because it's so dangerous. You walk down the street, you get shot. In Chicago, they've had thousands of shootings, thousands, since January Oh, Chicago's 1st. a war zone thousands of because shootings. of the war on drugs. And I'm saying, where is this? Is this a war-torn country? What are we doing? Yes, it's a war-torn country. It's literally a war-torn country. We have to bring back law and order in a place <coughs> like Chicago. And you have to militarize the police more. Thousands more. of people have been killed. Thousands over the last number of years. In fact, almost 4,000 have been killed since Barack Obama became president. Over four, almost 4,000 people in Chicago have been killed. Because of the drug war. Stop order. the damn drug now, war. whether or not in a place like Chicago, you do war. stop and frisk, which worked very oh, well. Stop and frisk. Yeah, let's go back to taking well the Constitution away from everybody. That'll help down. things. But you take the stop away the from drug criminals war. That shouldn't be having it. We have gangs roaming yes, the We street. do have gangs because of the and drug war. In many cases, they're illegally here, illegal immigrants. <coughs> and they have guns. And they shoot people. <coughs> And we have to be very and strong, and we have to be very war. vigilant. We have to be. We have to know what we're doing. He wants to militarize right now, the police our more. police, in many cases, are afraid to do anything. We have to protect our inner cities because African American communities are being decimated by crime. Your two minutes, your two minutes have expired, but I do want to follow up. Stop and frisk was ruled unconstitutional. Yeah, it's unconstitutional. He wants to bring it back. It, it largely singled out. Black and Hispanic young men. No, it, you're wrong. Uh, it went before a judge who was a very against police judge. Uh, it a was taken away police. from her, and our mayor, our new mayor, uh, refused to <coughs> move forward with the case. They would have won an appeal. If you look at it throughout the country, <coughs> there are many places where the argument is that it is, it's a form of racial profiling. It's no, the argument is that we have to take no the guns away from these people right. that have them and that stop are anyone you people want. that you have them. them. These are felons. These are people that are no, bad people that shouldn't be. When you have 3,000 everybody, which gets Chicago everyone riled up from January 1st, when you have 4,000 people killed in Chicago because of the because drug war from the beginning of the presidency of Barack Obama, his hometown, you have to have stop and frisk. You need more police. You need a better community. Uh, you know, uh, relation. You don't have good community relations in well, Chicago. It's terrible. I have property there. It's terrible what's going on in Chicago. But when you look, and Chicago's not the only. You go to Ferguson. You go to so many different places. You need better relationships. I agree with Secretary Clinton on this. You need better relationships between the communities and the police because in some cases it's not good. But you look at Dallas where the relationships were really studied. The relationships were really a beautiful thing. And then five police officers were killed one night very violently. Because of the drug war. So there's some bad things going See on. Some really here? bad things. Exactly. This but is we a bad thing. Lesson. It's the drug we war. Stop law it. And order. No. And we need law He's and like, order. we got to fight the drug war harder. In the inner After all these fucking because years, the people really. people that are most affected by what's happening are African American and Hispanic yes, people. Yes, that's why the and drug it's war very exists. unfair to them what our politicians are allowing to happen. Second point. Well, I've heard uh, I've heard Donald say this um, at his rallies, and it's it's really unfortunate that he paints such a dire, negative picture of black communities in our country. Wow. You know, the vibrancy of the black church, the is she really going there? Black businesses that employ so many people, uh, the opportunities that so many families well, are working up, to provide for their kids. There's a lot that we should like, be proud of. There are and happy black people. And lifting up. Everything's good. But we do always have to make sure we keep people safe. There are the right ways of doing it, and then there are ways that are ineffective. Stop and frisk was found to be unconstitutional, and in part because it was ineffective. It did not do what it needed to do. Now, I believe in community policing, and in fact, violent crime is one half of what it was in 1991. Property crime is down 40%. We just don't want to see it creep back up. We've had 
25 years of very good cooperation, but there were some First problems, down, you're locking some everybody unintended up. consequences. Too many young African-American and Latino men ended up in jail for nonviolent offenses. And it's just a fact that if you're a young African-American man and you do the same thing as a young white man, you are more likely to be arrested, I'm laughing at charged, on convicted, thing. and incarcerated. Everybody? So we've got to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. We yes, cannot just say law and order. We have to say, we we have to come forward with a plan that is going to divert and the drug people war? from the criminal justice system. How about ending the drug war? That would do that. with mandatory minimum sentences. That would do which that. put too many people away for too long for doing too little. We need to have more second chance programs. Well, you don't need I'm a second chance if you get rid of the drug war. Ending private prisons in the Well, you don't need the private system. prisons if you get rid of the drug the war. State system. You shouldn't have a profit motivation to fill prison cells with young Americans. So there are it's some the positive four. ways we can work on this. And I believe strongly that common sense gun common sense getting rid of the drug war assist us right now and this is something donald has supported along with the gun lobby right now we've got too many military style weapons on the streets in a lot of places yeah because our we're police in a war. are outgunned we need comprehensive background checks and we need to keep guns out of the hands of those who will do harm and we finally need to pass a prohibition on anyone who's on the terrorist watch list from being able to buy a gun in our country if you're Duh. too dangerous to fly you are too dangerous to too buy dangerous a gun to so there are things we can do and we ought to do it well, in that's a common bipartisan sense. they couldn't even do that last week you, you said we get that do done in this polarized congress policing to go right at implicit bias do you believe that police are implicitly biased against black people Lester, I think implicit bias is a problem for everyone, not just police. I think, unfortunately, too many of us in our great country um, jump to conclusions about each other. We'll jump to conclusions. And therefore, I think we need all of us to be asking hard questions about, you know, why am I feeling this way? It comes to policing, since it can have literally fatal consequences, I have said in my first budget we would put money into that budget to help us deal with implicit bias by retraining a lot of our police officers. I've met with a group of or very get rid distinguished of the drug experienced war. police chiefs a few weeks ago. They admit it's an issue. They've got a lot of concerns. Mental health is one of the biggest concerns because now police are having to handle a lot of really difficult mental health problems on the street. They want support. They want more training. They want more assistance. And I think the federal government could be in a position where we would uh, offer and provide that. Mr. I'd like to respond. Please. First of all, uh, I agree, and a lot of people, even within my own party, want to give uh, certain rights to people on watch lists and no-fly lists. Yeah, I make agree with sense. you. When a person is on a watch list or a no-fly list, and I have the endorsement of the NRA, which I'm very proud of. These are very, very good people, and they're protecting the Second Amendment. But uh, I think we have to look very strongly at no-fly lists and watch Second lists. Second Amendment and says, well-regulated militia. We'll help them. We'll, help them, quickly, we'll help them get so. off. But I tend to agree with that uh, quite strongly. I do want to bring up the fact that you were the one that brought up the word super predator about no, young black youth. That. And that's a term that I think was a uh, hard You can't be hard playing the I'm issue. not the racist one card. I'm really, Donald, but, really. Uh, I think it was a terrible thing to say. <laughs> and oh, when really it comes go there. to Please, uh, stop and frisk, you know, you're talking about taking guns away. Well, I'm talking about taking guns away from gangs and people that no, you're use stop them. talking about stopping everybody think, on the street really who's black or Hispanic. with me on this if you want to know the truth. I think maybe there's a political reason why you can't say it, but I really don't believe in New York City, stop and frisk, we had 2,200 murders, and stop and frisk brought it down to 500 murders. 500 murders is a lot of murders. Hard to believe 500 is like supposed to be good. But we went from 2,200 to 500, that and it was is. continued on by Mayor Bloomberg, and it was terminated by current mayor. But stop and fit frisk had a tremendous Poor impact mayor. on the like safety of New York City, tremendous beyond belief. So when you say it has it no polarized impact, the it really city did. and it led very, to the fact that impact. everyone's well, it's also fair to say if we're going to talk about uh, mayors that 
under the current mayor, crime has continued to drop, including murders. So there uh, you're is... Wrong. You're wrong. No, I'm murders not. Murders are up. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. Right, I don't have an extra York, phone for that. New York Sorry, folks. has done an excellent job. And I give credit. I give Someone credit fact check that, not me. going back, uh, two mayors, two police uh, chiefs, because other communities need to come together to do what will work uh, as well. Look, one murder is too many. But it is important that we learn about what has been effective and not go to things that sound good that really did not have the kind of impact that we would want. Who disagrees with keeping neighborhoods safe? But let's also add, no one should disagree about respecting the rights of young men who live in those neighborhoods. And so we need to do a better job of working again with the communities faith communities, business communities, as well as the police to try to deal with this problem. This conversation is about race, and so Mr. Trump, I have to ask but you... But I'd like to just respond, if I might. For, for, please, oh, 20 I'd seconds. I'd just like to respond. Please respond, then I've got a good uh, Look, the African-American community has been let down by our politicians. Of course they have. They talk good around election time, like right now, and after the election, they well, say... He looked her up and down when he said that. Oh my God, dude, he's the African-American community... Uh, look, the community within the inner cities has been so badly treated. They've been abused and used in order to get votes by Democrat politicians. No, they've been decimated by the drug war. We see a pattern here. Up to 100 years. Mr. Trump, look well, what's well, actually I, happening. I, I, the drug war is you, destroying our cities. You look at the inner cities. And and I just left Detroit. And I just suburbs, left Philadelphia. Rural just, areas. You know, you've seen everywhere. Been all over the place. Uh, we won't even talk about that neither. Stay home, and that's okay. But I will tell you, I've been all over, and I've met some of the greatest people I'll ever meet within these communities. And they are very, very upset with what their politicians have told them and what their politicians have done. I, I think I think that I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. And you know what else I prepared for? Uh -huh. I prepared to be president. And I think that's a good thing. Mr. Trump, for five years, you perpetuated a false claim that the nation's first black president was not a natural. She got a point in and the whole internet crashes. Citizen, you question his legitimacy. In the last couple of weeks, you acknowledge what most Americans have accepted for years. The president was born in the United States. Can you tell us what took you so I'll tell you very, well, just very simple to say. Uh, works for the campaign and close, very close friend of Secretary Clinton and uh, her campaign manager, Patty Doyle, went to during the campaign, her campaign against President Obama fought very hard, and you can go look it up, and you can check it out, and if you look, look at it CNN up. this past week, Patty Solis Doyle was on Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> Not on Wolf happened. Blitzer, but on the show. Uh, Lumenthal sent McClatchy, highly respected reporter at McClatchy, to McClatchy. Kenya to find out about it. They were pressing it very hard. She failed. To get the birth certificate. When I got involved, I didn't Talking about fail. the birth certificate still? I got him to give the birth certificate. So I'm satisfied with it. And I'll tell you why I'm satisfied with it. How much time are we going to spend talking about the previous president's birth certificate? Because really? I want to get on Can we talk about some issues here, please? I want to like get ending on the drug war. Can we talk about that? Stopping the TPP? Can we talk about that? No? And that are very important to the country. Yes, yeah, so those are important to the country. But I just want to get the answer here. The oh birth certificate was produced in 2011. You continued to tell the story and question the president's legitimacy in 2012, 13, 14, 15, yeah. as recently as January. So the question is, what changed your well, mind? Well, nobody was pressing it. Nobody was caring much <laughs> about it. You were pressing it, son. I Come on. I the question yeah. tonight, of course, but nobody mm -hmm. was caring much about it. Uh, but I was the one that got him to produce... Uh, the birth certificate. Uh, the birth certificate. I think I did a good job. I think I did a good job. Uh, Secretary Clinton also fought it. I mean, you know, now everybody in mainstream is going to say, oh, that's not true. Look, it's true. Sidney Blumenthal sent the reporter. Uh, you just have to take a look at CNN, the last week, the interview with your former campaign Yeah, her manager. campaign started it. It's and she was involved. But sorry. just like she can't bring back jobs... She can't produce. I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to fall, but I will let you respond to that because <laughs> there's be a, a lot there. The but we're talking about racial healing in this segment. 
Like, what do you say to Americans? Well, it was very, I say nothing. Color. I say nothing because I was able to get him to produce it. He should have produced it a long time before. We're I still talking nothing, about the birth certificate here. When you Dear Lord. Him, very, very good relationships over the last few uh, miles with my water situation better. Community. I think you can see He's still talking about how great he is for the black community. I feel that they really wanted me to come right, to the community. They want hold you guys up. I think I, I did a great job and a great service, not only for the country, but even for the president, in getting him to produce his birth Secretary Clinton. Well, just listen to what you heard. And clearly, as Donald just admitted, he knew he was going to stand on this debate stage and Lester Holt was going to be asking us questions. So he tried to put the whole racist birther lie to bed. We're still talking but about the birth certificate. Dear like, Lord. He has we only got 90 minutes really here. Started his political you, activity. Your campaign started it on this before racist lie that our first black president. You went with it, but you guys was started not it. An American citizen. You started it. There was absolutely no evidence for it, but he persisted. He persisted your year campaign after year planted in 2007 some of his to try to take Obama down. Some people that he was trying to bring into his fold apparently believed it or wanted to believe it. But remember. Donald started his career back in 1973 being sued by the Justice Department for racial discrimination because he would not rent apartments in one of his developments to African Americans and he made sure that the people who worked for him understood that was the policy. He actually was sued twice by the Justice Department. So he has a long record about the issues. of engaging in racist behavior and the birther yes. lie was a very hurtful one you know barack obama is a man of great dignity that's what you were saying when you were running against tell him no. how much it bothered him and annoyed him when you brought it up in 2007 yeah it bothered him then and used real things against i'm looking him. up but i like to remember what Michelle Obama said in her amazing speech at our Democratic National Convention. When they go low, we go high. Really? You, and Barack you Obama paraphr- went high, despite Donald Trump's you, best efforts Millennia to Trump bring him down. Mr. Trump, uh, you can respond, and we're going to move on. First lady? Respond. First of all, I got to watch in preparing for this some of your debates against Barack Obama. You treated him with terrible disrespect and I watch the way you talk now about how lovely everything is and how wonderful you are doesn't work that way you were after him you were trying to you even sent out or your campaign sent out pictures of him in a certain garb very famous pictures I don't think you could deny that but just last week your campaign manager said it was true so when you try to act holier than thou it really doesn't work. It really she doesn't work. Yeah, we the all tried it. Lawsuit. It didn't work. Yes, when the president I was very young, years, I reported to my father's company at a real estate company in Brooklyn, said. Queens. And oh, we, well. along with many, many other companies throughout the country, it was a federal lawsuit, were sued. We settled the suit with zero, with no admission of guilt. It was very easy to do, but they sued many people. I notice you bring that up a lot, and uh, you know I also notice the <coughs> nasty commercials that you do on me in so many different ways, which I don't do on you. Maybe I'm trying to save the money, but frankly, I look I look at that and I say, isn't that amazing? Because I settled that lawsuit with no admission of guilt, but that was a lawsuit brought against many real estate firms, wow. and it's just one of those things. I'll go on one step further. In Palm Beach, Florida, tough community, a brilliant community, a wealthy community, probably the wealthiest community there is in the world. I opened a club and he snorted because really he says that at like 10 places. No discrimination against African Americans, against Muslims, against anybody. And it's a tremendously successful club, and I'm so glad I did it. And I have been given great credit for what I did and I'm very very proud of it and that's the way I feel that is the true way I feel our next segment is called securing America we want to start with the 21st century war happening every day in this country our institutions are under cyber attack and our secrets are being stolen so my question is who's behind it and how do we fight it Secretary Clinton this answer goes to you the Russians well I think cyber security 
cyber warfare will be one of the, the biggest Russia. challenges facing the next president because clearly we're facing at this point uh, two different kinds of adversaries. There are the independent hacking groups that do it mostly for uh, commercial reasons to try to steal information that they then can use to make money. But increasingly, we are seeing cyber attacks coming from states, uh, organs Russia. of states. There the most goes. recent and troubling of these has been Russia. There we go. There's Saw no that doubt coming now that Russia has pike. used cyber attacks against all He's kinds of organizations the in our making country. Russia I am the enemy, deeply dude. concerned we don't want Russia about to be this. The enemy. I know Donald uh, we really don't. Praise, praiseworthy of uh, Vladimir Putin, but war. Putin is playing a really tough, long game here. Putin and is surrounded by NATO. Is to it's moving loose, in on him. Uh, cyber attackers Liar. to hack into government uh, files, to hack now into personal to play files, the hack into the Democratic Putin. National Committee. And we recently uh, have learned that, you know, that this is one of their uh, preferred methods of trying to wreak havoc and collect information. We need to make it very clear, whether it's Russia, China, Iran, or anybody else, the United States has much greater capacity. And we are not going to sit idly by and permit state actors to go after our information, our private sector information or our public sector information. And we're going to have to make it clear that we don't want to use the kinds of tools that we have. We don't want to engage in a different kind of warfare, but we will defend the citizens of this country. And the Russians need to understand that. I think they've been treating it as almost a, a probing. Uh, how far would we go? How All much would we do? And that's why I was, so, All the I was so shocked when Donald publicly invited Putin to hack into Americans. That is, that is just unacceptable. It's one of the reasons why 50 national security officials who served in Republican information in, in administration have said that Donald is unfit to be the commander in chief. It's comments like that that really worry people who understand the threats that we face. Mr. Trump, you have two minutes in the same question. Yeah, Who's behind it? I, I, I do it? want to say that I was just endorsed, and more are coming next week. It'll be over 200 admirals, many of them are here, admirals and generals endorsed me to lead this But that's country. a good old boys club right there. Uh, it just happened, Keepers and criminy. many more are coming. And I'm very proud of it. Uh, in addition, His I was just military endorsed by buddies. ICE. That's I've never endorsed anybody bunch. before on immigration. Uh, I was just endorsed by ICE. Can we talk about immigration? Are we going to get to that? Or is it almost over? Agents. So when uh, Secretary Clinton talks about this, I mean, I'll take the admirals and I'll take the generals any day over the political hacks that I see that have led our country so brilliantly over the last 10 years with their knowledge, okay? Because look at the Let's mess took about 10 years. In. Look at the mess that we're in as yeah, far as the look cyber. At it. I agree to parts of what Secretary Clinton said. Uh, we should be better than anybody else, and perhaps we're not. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. There's no way of knowing that it's Russia. Russia, Russia, but I don't... Maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be China. lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds okay but she wants to use it to go to war with russia and she's itching DNC. for that but what did we learn with the hashtag we syria that bernie sanders was taken advantage of by your people yeah. by debbie wasserman schultz look what happened to her but bernie yeah, she ended up on her campaign was taken advantage of that's what we lose now whether that was russia whether that was china whether it was another country we don't know because the truth is under president obama we've lost control of things that we used to have control well, the internet's uncontrollable we came in son with the internet we came up with the Hackers internet are always going to get around your Secretary Clinton and myself would agree shit. very much when you look at what ISIS is doing with the internet they're beating us at our own game ISIS so we have to get we talk very, about them please tough on cyber and cyber warfare now uh, killing Gaddafi and starting the war in Syria problem. created son, ISIS. He's ten years old. Not to mention Iraq. He computers. He is so good with these computers. It's unbelievable. Can we talk about that? The security aspect no. of cyber is very, Almost out of time very here. tough. About anything. And maybe it's uh, it's hardly doable. But I will say we are not doing the job we should be doing. But that's true throughout our whole governmental society. Yeah, we true. have so many things that we have to do better, Lester. And certainly cyber is one of them. Secretary Clinton. Thursday. 
Well, I think there are a number of issues that uh, we should be addressing. Um, I have put forth a plan to defeat ISIS. Uh, it <laughs> to does fight involve ISIS going indefinitely. after them online. I think we need to do much more uh, with our tech Fund companies every to end of a war. Uh, prevent ISIS and their operatives uh, from being able to use the Internet to radicalize, even direct uh, people in our country, in Europe and elsewhere. But we also have to intensify our air strikes against oh ISIS uh, she wants and more war. eventually support our Arab and Kurdish uh, partners to be able to actually take out ISIS uh, in Raqqa and their you want claim ISIS of to being go to, a caliphate. Go away? We're stop trying to overthrow Assad. The military is assisting Assad Iraq, is fighting ISIS uh, and we're fighting we're both. That, uh, within the Assad year, we'll is fighting ISIS and we're ISIS fighting both. Why are we not talking about that? Really squeeze them in Syria. Squeeze uh, them in Syria. She wants full on war. The and Russia's there? Okay, we'll fight them too. This coming to, uh, fucking warmonger. Volunteer for the Neoconservative foreign money, bullshit. Uh, foreign weapons. So we have to make this the top priority and I would also uh, make more the top priority. To That's what just happened right here. Right I was there. involved in a number of efforts to take out al-Qaeda leadership when I was Secretary of State, including, of course, taking out bin Laden. And I think we need to go after Baghdadi uh, as well. Make we that one of our Baghdad. organizing principles because we've got to defeat ISIS and we've got to do everything we can to disrupt their uh, propaganda How about stop funding ISIS? efforts online. Let's stop funding ISIS. ISIS. Let's defeat them that way. Over there, but there are American Neoconservative have been bullshit. To commit acts of terror. On American soil, the latest incident, of course, the bombings we just saw in uh, New York and New Jersey, the knife attack at a mall in Minnesota in the last year, deadly attacks in San Bernardino and Orlando. Uh, I'll ask this to both of you. Tell us specifically how you would prevent homegrown attacks by American citizens, Mr. Trump. Well, well first I have to say one thing, very important. Uh, Secretary Clinton is talking about taking out ISIS. We will take out ISIS. Well, President Obama and Secretary Clinton created a vacuum the way they got out of Iraq. Because yep. they got out, they shouldn't well, have been in, but once they got in, they had to get the out. way they That's got what out was Bush, a disaster. And Bush ISIS negotiated the exit. So she talks about taking them out. She's been doing it a long time. She's been trying to take them out for a long time. But they wouldn't have even been formed if they left some troops behind. Or if we had never gone in there, or maybe something can you back it up that, to not having the Iraq war real that. quick? Or, as I've been saying for a long time, and I think you'll agree because I said it to you once, had we taken the oil, and we should have taken the oil, ISIS would not have been able to form either because the oil was their primary source of income. And now they have the oil all over the place, including the oil, a lot of the oil. The CIA Syria, is their primary source of income, son. Secretary Clinton. Well, I hope the fact checkers are turned up and fact turning checker. up the volume and really working hard. Pump up the volume, so, pump up the volume, pump, pump. Donald supported the invasion of Iraq. Wrong. That is absolutely Why are we arguing wrong. whether he did? You voted again. for it. He actually advocated for And then advocated in Libya. Libya. And urged that uh, Gaddafi be taken out after. Let's talk about your vote, not his. Some business with him one time. He's warmonger. But the larger point. Yeah, the larger point is that you're a warmonger. Constantly is George W. Bush Lord. made the agreement about when American troops would exactly. leave That's Iraq, true. not Barack Obama. And the only way that American troops true. could have stayed in Iraq is to get an agreement from the then Iraqi government that would have protected our troops. And the Iraqi government would not give that. But let's talk about the question you asked, Lester. The question you asked is, what do we do here in the United States? That's the most important part of this. How do we prevent attacks? How do we protect our people? And I think we've got to have an intelligent surge How about if we stop where the we war? are looking for every surge. scrap of information. I was so proud of law enforcement in New York, in uh, Minnesota, in New Jersey. You know, they responded so quickly, so professionally to the attacks uh, that occurred by Rahami. And they brought him down. And we may find out more information because he is still alive, which may prove That's to be an be intelligence an uh, benefit. So we've got to do everything we can to vacuum up intelligence from Europe, from the Middle East. That means we've got to work more closely with our allies. War? And that's something that Donald has been very dismissive of. Right. We're working with NATO, the 
We need to catch more people to kill. Military alliance in the history of the That's world to position. really turn our attention to terrorism. We're working more with our friends in the Middle East, many of which we're in 135 you know, countries now. Majority nations. We've bombed seven. Donald has consistently you want more? insulted what are you nuts? Muslims abroad, Muslims at home. When we He's need nuts. to be cooperating with Muslim nations and with the American Muslim community, she cooperates the with Saudi lines. Arabia. They can provide information to us that we might not get anywhere else. They need to have close working cooperation with law enforcement in these communities, oh, not be alienated and pushed away oh, uh, as some alienated. of uh, Donald's rhetoric, right unfortunately, okay. has uh, led to. Mr. 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 Well, well, I'd have to respond. Please respond. The, oh, please. Um, the secretary said very strongly about working with, we've been working with them for many years. And we have the greatest mess anyone's ever seen. You look at the Huge Middle mess. East, it's a total mess. mess. Under your direction to a large extent. Yep. But you look at the Middle East, you started the Iran deal. That's a, another beauty where you have a country that was ready to fall. I mean, they were doing so badly. They were choking on the sanctions. And now they're going to be actually probably a major power at some point pretty soon, the way they're going. But when you look at NATO, That's a long I was story. asked on a major show, a room. what do you think of NATO? Now, you have to understand I'm a business person. I did really well, but I have common sense. And I said, well, I'll tell you, I haven't given lots of thought to NATO, but two things. Number one, the 28 countries of NATO, many of them aren't paying the fair fair. Share. Number two, and that bothers me because we should be, as we're defending them, and this they should sense. at least be paying us what they're or supposed to be Or we could just get rid of NATO because we're stopping the war. What if we just stop the war and, and don't need two, NATO? I said it very strongly. Yeah? NATO can we try that? Please? Because, and I was Instead very of this, and it was getting everyone to put more money into NATO, let's just get rid of NATO. Let's do that. Because we're going to stop the war. Said, because you're going to write in Frank Barrish, right? Because, I mean, what, are you kidding me? Of course you're going to write in Frank Barrish. What are you, and about Four months ago, I read on the <laughs> front page of the Wall Street Journal that NATO is opening up a major terror division. And I think that's great. NATO is pushing Russia towards war. That's what NATO is doing. Surrounding NATO. Russia so and moving closer and closer. What do you think Russia is going to do? NATO. But I said they have to focus on terror also. And they're going to do that. And that was, believe me, I'm sure I'm not going to get credit for it, but that was largely because of what I was saying and my criticism of NATO. I think sober. we have to get NATO to go into the Middle East with us in addition to surrounding nations, and we have to knock the hell out of ISIS, and we have to do it fast. When ISIS formed in this vacuum created by Barack Obama and Secretary Clinton, and believe me, you were the ones that took out the troops. Not only that, you named the day. They couldn't believe it. They sat back probably and said, well, I can't Lester, believe covered, it. They said, no, wait a minute. We've covered when they ground. formed, When they formed, this is something that never should have happened. It should have never happened. None you of it should have happened. Taking out ISIS, but you were there, and the you wars were Secretary shouldn't State have happened. A little infant. Now it's in over thirty countries, and you're going to stop them? I don't think so, Mr. Trump. You, with a lot of these are judgment questions. You <laughs> had supported the war in Iraq before the invasion. What makes your I did not what, support what, the war two, in Iraq. Two thousand two. That is a mainstream media nonsense put out by her. Because she, frankly, I think the best person in her campaign is mainstream media. My question is, since <laughs> you, you, would you like to hear? Why is your, I was why against is your the judgment? war. Wait a minute. I was against the war in Iraq. Just so you put it out. The record shows I, otherwise. The record why does is, not show that. Why was you, is your the judgment? The record any... shows that I'm right. When I did an interview with Howard, Howard Stern, Stern, very lightly, first time anyone's asked me that, I said, said sure. very lightly, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, Who sure. knows? That's all they got. I then did an interview with Neil Cavuto, we talked about huh. the economy is more important. I then the vampire Sean Neil Hannity, Cavuto. which everybody refuses to call Sean Hannity. I had numerous conversations with Sean Hannity at Fox, and Sean Hannity said, and he called me the other day, and I spoke He's to like, him. Hey, about the it. other day, he said you were totally against the war because he was for the war. Why is and your wait, excuse me, better than and that was before the war started. Sean Hannity said very strongly. Most of us were against the war. Big why big are we arguing this? Let's argue why she. I was against the war. He watch said, more war. Can we talk about the Sean ones that she's of. done and wants to do? Instead of arguing about what he said on Howard and Stern? For the love of Christ? Also, not very much, because we should have never been there. But nobody calls Sean Hannity. And then they did an article in a major magazine shortly after the war started. Hashtag nobody called Sean I think Hannity. in 04. But they did an article which had me totally against the war in Iraq. 
And one of your compatriots said, you know, whether it was before or right after, Trump was definitely, because if you read this article, there's no doubt. He didn't care to affect him. He really was like, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea, but I'm I'm not like serving in Congress and have a vote on the war. Can we talk about why she did that? And then why she didn't learn her fucking lesson from that? So she did it in Libya, and then she did it in Syria, and now there are 10 million refugees around the world? Can we talk about that, please? Mrs. Well, I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. Oh, I also have well, you need to write in Frank Harris. That right there. Is. You know, I have a much better... She spent, let me tell you, she spent hundreds of millions of dollars on an advertising. You know, they get Madison Avenue into a room, they put names. Oh, temperament, let's go after... I think my strongest asset, maybe by far, is my temperament. Oh, dear Lord. I have a winning temperament. Oh, I know please. how to win. She does not have... Secretary Clinton. Wait. The AFL CIO the other day. He's like, they think I'm winners too. Everybody screen. thinks I'm a winner. Can we talk about more people who to, think I'm a winner Secretary instead Clinton. of the real issues, real but quick? He was totally out of control. I said, there's a person with a temperament that's got a problem. Secretary Clinton. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Good for her, though. Let's um, let let's uh, talk about two <laughs> important issues that were briefly mentioned by Donald. First, NATO. You know, NATO as a military alliance has something called Article 5, and basically it says this. An attack on one is an attack, attack on, on another. That's what is not what he's talking about. Time he's saying making them pay. But let's talk about getting rid of... When the 28 nations of NATO said that they would go to Afghanistan with us yeah. to fight terrorism. But Dick Cheney took the buildings down, so that was a side. mistake. With respect to Iran... When I became Secretary of State, Iran was weeks away from having enough nuclear material to form a bomb. They had mastered the nuclear fuel cycle under the Bush administration. They had built covert facilities. They had stocked them with centrifuges that were whirling away. And we had sanctioned them. I voted for every sanction against Iran when Good I was in the you. Senate. But it wasn't enough. So I spent a year and a so half you putting fight together... Them. Good. A coalition Let's fight that included Syria real Russia quick. and China. What could that to cost To impose us? the toughest and blood and sanctions on Iran. Neoconservative and liar. And drive them to the negotiating table. And my successor, John Kerry, and President Obama got a <laughs> deal that put a lid on Iran's nuclear program without firing a single shot. That's diplomacy. That's coalition building. That's working with other nations. The other day... I saw Donald okay, saying that war in there Libya, were some Iranian Syria, sailors on a ship that. in the you waters off of Iran, and they were taunting American sailors who were on a nearby ship. He said, you know, if they taunted our sailors, I'd blow them out of the water and start another war. Yeah. That's that would not good judgment. That of course is it would start a war. Is right he stupid? To be commander-in-chief. To be They're both idiots, man. Taunted. Jesus. And the worst really? part no, of what you heard really Donald here? say has been about right nuclear in weapons. Bars. He has said repeatedly that he didn't care if other nations got nuclear weapons. Japan, South Korea, even Saudi Arabia. It has been the policy of the United States, Democrats and Republicans, to do everything we could to reduce <laughs> the proliferation of nuclear weapons. He Which even said, well, you know, if there were nuclear everywhere. war in the... East Asia, well, you know, that's you know fine. What's coming, you know, have a have... good time, folks. And in fact, his cavalier but attitude about nuclear nuked. weapons is so deeply troubling. That is They're the number up, one threat we face in the world. And it becomes particularly threatening if terrorists ever get their hands on any nuclear material. So a man who can be provoked by a tweet should not have his fingers anywhere near the nuclear codes as far as I think anyone with any sense about this should be concerned. Our uh, heart's uh, getting a little bit old, I must say. Listen, it's a good one, though. I, I would like to well touch. describes the problem. It's not, a, it's not an accurate one at all. Oh, it's not an wow. accurate one. So I just it's want like to watching just give a lot of things. And just a really respond. unhappy couple I agree with argue. Her on one thing. The single yeah. greatest problem the world has is nuclear armament, nuclear weapons. Yes. Not global warming. Like no, you no, think global warming. Your, your president. Thanks. He's an idiot. Uh, nuclear is the single greatest threat. 
Uh, just to go well, down the list. Stopping the war so everyone doesn't defend, use the defend, nuclear weapons. We defend Germany. We defend South Korea. We defend Saudi Arabia. We defend countries. Yeah. They do not pay us, but they should be paying us because we are. That's an irrelevant thing. We need to stop the war, not fortune. get paid for That's why it. We're losing. We lose. We lose on everything. I say, who makes these? We lose on everything. All I said that it's very possible. It's almost over for the love of God. They don't pay a fair share because this isn't 40 years ago where we could do what we're doing. Hashtag this isn't we 40 years ago. We can't defend Japan, a, a behemoth selling us cars by the million. We need to move on. Wait, yes, we important. do, please. Can we All move I on? All I said was they may have to defend themselves or they have to help us out. We're a country that owes $20 trillion. They have to help us out. Uh, as less... far as the nuclear is concerned, oh boy. I agree. It is the single greatest threat that this country has. Which leads to my next question as we enter our last segment here on the school. Oh, yeah, the last segment. America on nuclear weapons. <laughs> President Obama reportedly considered changing the nation's long-standing policy on first use. Do you support the current policy? <laughs> Mr. Trump, you have two minutes on that. Well, I have to say that, uh, you know, for what Secretary Clinton was saying about nuclear with Russia, she's very cavalier in the way she talks about various countries. War with Russia, but yeah. But Russia's been expanding. They're, they have... They, much newer capability than we do. We have not been uh, updating from the new standpoint. I looked the other night, I was seeing b Because we've crept NATO to their border. Your, your father, your grandfather could be they flying them. Uh, we are We're not, bringing it. We are Can not we stop keeping it? up with other countries. Neither I would like people everybody are stop to it. end it, just get rid of it. End it, the uh, war. But I would certainly not do first strike. I think that once the nuclear the alternative war. happens. War in general. And all wars. At Frank the Barrett. same time, we have to be prepared. I can't take anything off the table. Because you look at some of these countries, you look at North Korea, uh, we're doing nothing there. China should solve that problem for us. China should go into North Korea. China is, is totally powerful as it relates to North Korea. And by the way, another one powerful is the worst deal I think I've ever seen negotiated that you started is the Iran deal. Iran is one of their biggest trading partners. Iran has power over North Korea. And when they made that horrible deal with Iran, they should have included the fact that they do something with respect to North Korea. And they should have done something with respect to Yemen and all these other places. And when asked to Secretary Kerry, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do add other things into the deal? One of the great giveaways of all time, of all time, including $400 million in cash. Nobody has ever seen that before. That turned out to be wrong. It was actually $1.7 billion in cash. Obviously, I guess, for the hostages, it certainly looks that way. So you say to yourself, why didn't they make the right deal? This is one of the worst deals ever made by any country in history. The deal with Iran will lead to nuclear problems. All they have to do is sit back 10 years and they don't have to do you're, much you're and they're going to end up fire. getting nuclear. I Israel met with wants Iran Bibi gone. Netanyahu Iran's going to be gone by the she end of the decade. Happy, right. Mrs. Uh, well, Secretary Clinton, end of the decade, there will me, not be an Iran. Let me Iran. start by saying words matter. Of the wars words of this matter when you run for president and right they here. really matter when you are president. And I want to reassure our allies in Japan and South Korea and elsewhere She's trying to act president that we have mutual defense treaties and we will honor them. It is essential that America's word be good. And so I know that this campaign has caused some questioning and some worries on the part of many leaders across the globe. I've talked with a number of them. Uh, but I want to, on behalf of myself, and I think on behalf of a majority of the American people, say that, you know, our word is good. It's also important that we look at the entire global situation. There's no doubt that we have other problems with Iran, but personally I'd rather deal with the other problems having put that lid on their nuclear program than still to be facing that. And Donald never tells you what he would do. Donald, huh? Would he have started a war? Would he have bombed?